Well, all in the name of good aviation safety and education, let's take a few minutes here to go ahead and talk about wake turbulence. Now let's talk about this in two ways. First way is what you need to know for the FAA written exam. Then we're gonna talk about this in terms of what you need to know for real life to stay alive. So, FAA written exam. If you have a heavy aircraft, my right hand, and you, and you're coming into land, you wanna stay above their glide path and land beyond their point of touchdown. That way, you're going to be landing beyond where they were developing any sort of wake. Now, if there's a tailwind involved, that'd be pretty bad, but just don't land with tailwinds. If you're going to be taking off behind a heavy aircraft, you want to rotate prior to their point of rotation because they don't develop wake until they rotate, in theory. And then you'll want to go ahead and turn upwind because the wake will be getting blown downwind. So you'll turn upwind before you enter their flight path and always stay out of the flight path of a heavy aircraft developing wake in front of you. So that's written test questions. What's the worst case scenario according to the written exam for wake turbulence? It'd be a light quartering tailwind because that would keep the wake on the runway the longest. So when you have a little bit of a crosswind, a little bit of a tailwind, light winds, stable air, that's going to be the worst case for wake. Now in reality, here's the deal. Heavy aircraft that depart in front of you might not generate any wake from their wings until they get moving through the air, but the fact is they're big. If you're gonna depart behind a 737 in your Cessna 172, that thing's pushing a lot of air out of the way. Plus there's a lot of jet wash coming off those engines, and I guarantee you the air is gonna be pretty stirred up behind them. You're gonna to wanna to give it some time. How much time? Well, two to five minutes, and we'll talk about how do you know. Ultimately, the more stable the air, well, the worse the wake is going to be. It's going to hang around longer. When we look at boat wake on a nice glassy lake, the wake will travel for miles and miles. But when there's a little bit of chop or a little bit of wind involved in the lake and the surface tension is broken up, that wake dissipates a lot quicker. Same thing happens when we're flying our airplanes. So when we're flying along in really smooth, stable air, and we have a little bit of a crosswind blowing across the runway, well, that wake comes off, but one of those wing vortices is going to stay right over the runway, and the stable air allows it to keep swirling. That's bad. Now, as far as taking off behind of a heavy aircraft, how long do you wanna wait? If it's really stable in prime conditions, you're gonna to wanna to probably give it a solid three to five minutes, depending on how big that airplane is. I've watched an Airbus A330 take off and then a regional jet take off behind them, an 80,000 pound regional jet, and get rolled what looked like almost about 90 degrees when they were just about three to 400 feet off the ground. Had it been a 172, it probably would have looked something like that and then hit the ground. So give it time. Three to five minutes is typically going to be adequate. Now, what about landing? This still applies during landing too. You might wanna give it three to five minutes flying in the traffic pattern, waiting for weight to clear out from a heavy jet that just landed in front of you. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a heavy jet. It could just be wake turbulence coming off of something like a Cessna 182 or a Cessna 206 when you're flying your little 150 and it's really smooth, stable air. It may not be enough weight to roll you inverted and put you in the ground, but it can still really affect your flight path. Now, it's not just on takeoff and landing that this is an issue. Anytime any aircraft, your Cessna 150 or a Boeing 747 is in flight, it's going to be developing lift. Anytime it's developing lift, it's going to be making wake. So not just is this an issue when we're taking off and landing, it's a big issue when we're taking off and landing because if you get rolled inverted and you're only 50 feet off the ground, it's a lot worse than getting rolled inverted when you're at 10,000 feet. Neither is ideal though, and there have been instances of wake turbulence actually rolling a Canon Air jet inverted several times and losing thousands of feet when it crossed through the wake of an A380 up in the flight levels of above 30,000 feet. It actually did so much damage to that Challenger jet that the airplane was written off as a total loss. Although they were able to land safely, thank God, it could have easily ripped the wings off and done even more structural damage. The same scenario can easily apply to us in our little airplanes. If there's a big heavy jet at say 10,000 feet and we're crossing underneath them at 9,500, you might wanna think twice about how close you're getting and perhaps cross their flight path two, three, four, five minutes after they were already there. So maybe take a vector from ATC or change your heading to try to stay away from their flight path or at least cross their flight path long after they were already there and that wake has had time to die out. Bottom line is, weight turbulence has killed plenty of pilots out there. In little airplanes, in big airplanes, it's something we need to be aware of. And the best thing, when in doubt, when you're not sure how bad the weight turbulence is gonna be, where the wind's coming from at the ground, or where the wind's coming from at 500 feet or 1,000 feet, where it might be different, you're not sure how long you should wait before taking off behind a big jet or behind a bigger airplane that might be developing wake, 
Well, simply give it five minutes, you should be in the clear then. You'll hear the standard stuff from ATC, two minute wake turbulence separation, three minute wake turbulence separation, depending on whether how big you are or how big the airplane was in front of you that took off, if it's a heavy, a super heavy, this, that, whatever. Throw all that stuff aside, we got other things to worry about when we're flying our airplanes. Rather than waiting two or three minutes, why not wait five minutes and know that it's absolutely going to be no factor to you. If you look around and you say, hey, I've got a good 10, 12 knot crosswind directly across the runway, and there's a lot of cumulus clouds up in the sky, looks like pretty unstable air, well then maybe you can wait a little less, or maybe you just don't wanna worry about it at all, and you take an extra few minutes on the ground, burning very little fuel, just sweating there for a few extra minutes, and know that you won't have to worry about it in flight. Keep an eye on where that airplane takes off in front of you and where they go after they do take off so you don't cross their flight path unexpectedly and pick up wake turbulence unexpectedly. The smoother the air, the more wake turbulence is going to be a hazard for you, whether you're taking off, landing, or just in cruise flight. Bear in mind why we like to say the light quartering tailwind is so hazardous is because it assumes a light, stable breeze coming across the runway, and since wingtip vortices tend to spread out left and right at about three knots, well with a three knot crosswind, say coming from the right, that's going to hold the upwind wingtip vortice directly over the runway, causing very swirly air there for takeoff and landing. I hope that's educational for you guys and at least fun to look at. It was fun making this video. If you have any questions on this or anything else, go ahead and leave it in the comments below or log on to fly 8 mikealphacom Click on the Ask a Question tab at the top of the webpage there and be sure to check out all the awesome courses we have on there on Fly at Mike Alpha for you. The Private Pilot, Commercial Pilot, Instrument Pilot, Tailwheel, CFI, all those different courses on the website. It's all online. Go ahead and click in the link right in the description below if you want to check any of that out. We guarantee you will pass your written exam and pass your check ride when you take our courses at flyatmikealpha.com. And as always, guys, fly safe. If you cannot fly every day, fly8mikealpha.com. We'll see y'all in the next one.